Let's receive our daily bread right now. Father, in Jesus' name, we believe we receive our fresh manna from heaven, the living word of God. Father, in Jesus' name, I believe that you put your thoughts into my mind, your words into my mouth, and that I, as I hear, I speak. I say only those things I hear my father say. And Father, these words are spirit and they are life. Now let's acknowledge the Lordship of Jesus. Jesus is my Lord. Jesus is Lord over my family. Jesus is Lord over my life. Jesus is Lord over my nation. And Jesus is Lord over the nations of the earth. Now let's acknowledge that we are going to receive, hear and receive the word. And you know, that's very important for us to use our faith on that. There's many times that I say, Father, in Jesus' name, I believe that my mind is focused on your word. When my mind would want to dart from one thing to another, I go, no. In Jesus' name, my mind focuses on the Word of God. The blood of Jesus is over my mind, and my mind is attending to the Word of God. So that's a good confession for us right now. Say, in Jesus' name, my mind is focused only on the Word of God right now. And Father, I thank you that you opened my ears to hear as the learned and that today is my day of salvation. And as I hear the word of God, it goes into my mind and my heart and it does not return void, but it does accomplish in me and for me what it is sent to do. In Jesus' name. So, the Holy Spirit has taken us over to Ephesians chapter 6, where he is teaching us faith. He's teaching us about our weapons so that we can tread upon the serpent and the scorpion and over all the power of the enemy, as Jesus said, and nothing shall by any means harm us. And then also he said in Psalms 91 that we will tread upon the lion and the adder. The young lion and dragon do we trample under feet. But we have to know how to do that. So he's taken us over to Ephesians 6 where he says that um, finally my brethren be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And he says to put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all, stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, having on the breastplate of righteousness, your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. And above all, taking the shield of faith wherewith you quench every fiery dart of the wicked one. So he's teaching us faith right now. And we learned what faith was, that faith is actually the heavenly substance that God used to create the worlds with. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. It is the evidence of things not seen. And we learned, we've been learning how faith comes. And you have to know this only by the word. The word of God is our instruction manual. But we have the Holy Spirit that is the teacher and he is the guide into all truth. And so he is the best teacher ever. And he, the word says, Jesus himself said that he will teach you all things. So I receive that by faith, that he is teaching us all things. Praise God. And um, so in Romans chapter 10, we learned how faith comes. 
It comes by hearing the word of God. He says, so then faith or believing comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And so now we're learning how we hear one of two ways. You may hear from a minister, a teacher, uh, a preacher, a pastor, as long as they're teaching the word and not just doctrine, not just um, religion, but teaching the actual word of God, then that is one way. And the other way is the best way where he says in Romans, he says, but what saith it? The word is nigh you, even in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. So speaking that word, and you know, as you speak that word into your heart, it becomes faith in your heart. It becomes the substance of faith. So you may not feel like it's doing anything when you're speaking the word because you're planting the seed of the word, you're watering the seed of the word, but you just keep doing that, and it becomes the substance of faith. Yesterday, we looked at the perfect example of Mary that heard the word that the angel brought from God, and her response was, be it unto me, according to thy word. So we're going to finish that story today. It's not a story. I mean, it's a true story. It is a story, but it's a true story. But we're going to finish that today because to see the process of faith, it's, it's the same for every person from God who, you know, even in Hebrews 11, he starts out with the worlds were framed by the word of God. So he tells you in the beginning that God used faith. So faith works the same from Genesis through Revelation. It is no different. It is the law of faith. So after Mary said, be it unto me according to your word, it says, and the angel departed from her. And like I said yesterday, at that moment, the word, that incorruptible seed of the word of God took root in her heart and became flesh in her physical womb. The same way that happened for her, you can receive the word of healing for your body, taking the incorruptible seed of the word on healing and planting that in your heart by speaking, then that word will become flesh and it will become health to all of your flesh. So Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste into a city of Judah. And listen, she did this immediately after she, after the angel spoke to her, and then she said, be it unto me according to thy word. She didn't wait around to see if there were any signs of pregnancy. She believed the word, and she went immediately because she believed. And she entered into the house of Zacharias and saluted Elizabeth, and it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the babe leaped in her womb. Of course, that was John the Baptist. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost, and she spake out with a loud voice. And listen, this is what the Holy Ghost is saying through Elizabeth. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And whence is this to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For lo, as soon as the voice of your salutation sounded in mine ears, 
The babe leaped in my womb for joy. And remember, she's speaking this by the Holy Ghost. And blessed is she that believed. Blessed is she that believed. For there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the Lord. So I'm going to read that again. Blessed is she that believed, for there shall be a performance of those things that were told her from the Lord. So what was the process? Mary heard the word, and then she received that word into her heart by saying, Be it unto me according to thy word. And that word gave her the faith to believe. So she believed that word. The birth of Jesus did not just happen. There was um, the process of faith. And you know, in the book of John, John 1.1, 1, 1, in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. And without him, the word was not anything made that was made. And then a few verses later, it says, And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. What word? The word that was spoken to Mary. And in that word, was all of the other prophecies that had ever been spoken to bring Jesus, our Lord, and our Savior into existence for one reason, and that was for you and for me, for our salvation. But listen now to um, what Mary's response was. Remember, Elizabeth was speaking by the Holy Ghost and she said, blessed is she that believed, for there shall be a performance of those things that were told her from the Lord. And then Mary said, my soul doth magnify the Lord, and that my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior. And she said, for he hath regarded the low estate of his handmaiden. For from henceforth, all nations, all generations shall call me blessed. For he that is mighty hath done to me great things, and holy is his name. That's another sermon in itself. Jesus wasn't even born. She had no signs of pregnancy at this point. And yet she says, for he that is mighty hath done great things unto me, and holy is his name. For And his mercy is upon them that fear him from generation to generation. He hath showed strength with his arm. He hath scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He hath put down the mighty from their seats, and exalted them of low degree. He hath filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he hath sent empty away. He hath helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy. As he spake to our fathers, to Abraham, and to his seed forever. Listen to what came out of her mouth. I could go down through my uh, index and give you the scripture for every one of those scriptures, the word that she confessed. It was already in her heart. That's why she, at the moment that the angel spoke that to her, and she said, be it unto me according to thy word, because she was already believing the word. She had already put the word in her heart. 
So listen to this in um, Deuteronomy. Chapter 6, verse 6 and 7. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in your heart. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise up. So he was saying, talk the word. Deuteronomy 11. And you shall teach them your children speaking of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way, when you lie down, when you rise up and thou shalt write them upon the doorpost of thine house and upon thy gates that your days may be multiplied and the days of your children in the land which the Lord swore unto your fathers to give them as the days of heaven upon the earth. And just prior to that in Deuteronomy 11, he says, you shall lay up these my words in your heart. So Mary had done that. She had put the word of God in her heart. So that is what came out of her heart. The word says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And that a good man will bring forth good things out of the good deposits of his heart, but an evil man will bring forth evil things out of the deposits of his heart. But Mary had already put the word of God in her heart. And so that's what came out was the word of God. You know, in the book of Acts, he says um, that the word of God grew and multiplied and prevailed. And I wanted to read you one other too in Job. Just a moment and I'll find it for you. Because he says, just a moment. This is in Job 22. Acquaint now yourself, and that's verse um, 21. Acquaint now yourself with him and be at peace, thereby good shall come unto you. Receive, I pray you, the law from his mouth, and lay up his words in your heart. If you return to the Almighty, you shall be built up. You shall put away iniquity far from your tabernacles. Then you shall lay up gold as dust, and the gold of Ophir as the stones of the brook, Yes, the Almighty shall be your gold, and you shall have plenty of silver. For then shall you have your delight in the Almighty, and shall lift up your face unto God. Thou shalt make thy prayer unto him, and he shall hear you, and you shall pay your vows. Thou shalt also decree a thing, and it shall be established unto you, and the light shall shine upon your path. When men are cast down, you shall say, there is lifting up, and he will save the humble person. So again, he was saying, lay up these thy words, my words in your heart. Well, on this side of the cross, and with the Holy Spirit in us, we have a new heart. We also have the Holy Spirit, the Father himself, and Jesus on the inside of us. And so Jesus said to the disciples, he said for them to go everywhere preaching the gospel. And the Holy Spirit confirmed the word with signs following. So as you put the word in your heart, it grows up quickly because it's a supernatural word in a supernatural heart, a new heart given to you by your Father God. And so you can expect supernatural crops of the word to grow up in you. And let me read you this one more. Uh, in 1 Peter 1, he says, 
Oh, and I wanted to say this is we don't have an angel to talk. I mean, we do have angels and they can talk to us. Yes. But you don't have to have an angel to talk to you because we have the word of the living God that every time you open it, it is alive and powerful and the Holy Spirit quickens it to you. And let me tell you, he will love you through the word. You know, he even says in um, Ephesians 3 to, um, let's see, how does he say that? To stay in his love or that, that we know the love of Christ that passeth knowledge. That's it. And then in Jude, he says, keep yourself in the love of God. But in 1 Peter 1, verse 23, he says, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. For all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man as the flower of grass. The grass withereth, and the flower falleth away. But the word of the Lord endures forever. And this is the word which by the good news is preached unto you. You were born again by the word of God. And the same way you received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. You heard the word, you received the word, you believed the word, you confessed the word, and you confessed Jesus. And you were born again. And that's how we receive everything. And then he says, in 1 Peter 2, 1 and 2, Wherefore, laying aside all malice, all guile, that's all deceit, all hypocrisies, all envies, and all evil speakings, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word, that you may grow thereby. In the last, let's see, the last um, four years, I've had some great grandbabies born to me and I um, was privileged to be a part of their lives, to be close enough where I could uh, help with them some. And just watching, the one thing a newborn babe wants is mommy's milk. I mean, they have to have mommy's milk. Well, he tells us as newborn babes, we should desire, we have to have the word of God, that that is our greatest desire, that is our ongoing desire, is the word of God. And he says, so that you may grow thereby. The only way to grow spiritually is by the word of God. As you hear the word, then it is your spiritual food. It is the living manna from heaven. And that word grows up in us and produces of itself. And I'm really getting ahead of the teaching in Mark chapter four, but that's just a little insight into that. But as you plant that word, it becomes faith substance in you as well. And the shield of faith that quenches every fiery dart of the wicked one. Well, tomorrow we will learn how faith operates. Now that we know what it is and how it comes, now we're going to learn how it operates. Remember all day, Jesus is Lord. Thank God for his word. And thank God that his word works in us and for us in Jesus' name.